All right, we're going to review for your conceptual unit for a test. It says compute the exact value of the function for the given x value without using a calculator. So they want us to find for x equals one third. So I have negative seven times five to the one third. Well, the only thing they did to get their answer was they changed this into a radical. So that'd be negative seven times the cube root of five. That's, they left it like that. You could multiply that out and get a decimal, but they're leaving it like that. Okay, it says determine a formula for the exponential function whose graph is shown in the figure. Oops, sorry. All right, so if we've got an exponential function, it is y equals a times b to the x. To get your a, remember your a is your y-intercept, okay? Or you can find f of zero. Okay, which would, if I plug in 0 um, for x, actually let's use function notation. So to get your a, you find f of 0, which would be a times b to the 0. Oh, I'm sorry. Darn it, you plug this in. So f of x would be 3 equals a times b to the 0. So I plugged in this x and this y. b to the 0 is 1, which means a equals 3. Okay, so now I need to get a b, which is why they give me another ordered pair. So now if I change this to x and this to y and this to a, I have 18 equals 3 times b to the second, because i got to figure out b now. So I'm going to isolate, divide by 3, I get 6 equals b squared. And if I square root, I get b equals the square root of 6, because I can't break it down. And they're going to write it as 6 to the 1 half. Okay? So, what we have now, then, is... Um, there's my b, there's my a, so my function is f of x equals a, which is 3, times b, which is 6 to the 1 half to the x. Okay, and then they don't leave it like this. What they did is powered that power, so they said the function is 3 times 6 to the x over 2, which is right there. All right. Um, use transformations to graph y equals negative 2 to the negative x. The mother function would be y equals 2 to the x, which passes through 0, 1, and 1, 2. So if I plot that, I would have mother function would be 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 2. There's mother. Okay, so to use transformations, and again, when you're matching graphs like this, you don't have to, I mean, you can, you can do the math if you want to, but this negative is going to turn it upside down, which would put it like this, okay? And this is going to reflect it over y, so that's going to make it turn around this way, which means it would do, I'm terrible at drawing these, which means it would do this. We'll come up like this and turn around. Yeah? So I'm looking for the graph that looks like that, which is A. Or you could do the points. The negative on the ground says multiply Y by negative 1. That would give me 0, negative 1, 1, negative 2. The uh, negative in the air means divide X by negative 1. So that'd be 0, negative 1. And negative 1, negative 2. So if I plot that, 0, negative 1, negative 1, negative 2, and there's my graph. Okie dokie. Okay, it says transform this graph of f into the graph of g, sketch the graph by hand. Okay, well, if this is mother, then her ordered pairs would be 0, 1, and 1, comma, 0.5. So these two things are happening to y. So I'm going to PEMDAS those, so I'm going to multiply by 4, and I get 0, 4, 1, half of 4 is 2. Then I'm going to add 3 to the y's, 
That's going to give me 0, 7, 1, 5. Those two are done. And there, that's it. There's no nothing to do to the x. So if I graphed 0, 7 and 1, 5, there's the graph. This one doesn't hit 0, 7. This one doesn't hit 0, 7. Those are out. Okie dokie. Alright. Um, another transformation. Well, here's mother. So her ordered pairs would be 0, 1 and 1, 2.72. Okay, and they want me to multiply the y's by 2. So times 2 times 2, I get 0, 2, 1, comma, 2.72 times 2 is 5.44. That's done. Now on top, they want me to do two things. They want me to add 3 and divide by, well, sorry. They, they're saying add 3 and multiply by negative 3. So we're going to do the opposite, and we're going to do it in Asmodev order. So I'm going to actually subtract 3 from my x's, which gives me negative 3, 2, and negative 2, 5.44. And then I'm going to divide my x's by negative 3 because they're multiplying by negative 3. And that's going to give me 1, 2, 1, 2, negative 2 thirds is 0. 0.6 repeating 5.44. So if I plot those points, 1, 2, and 0. 0.6, 5, 0. 0.44, about right there, yeah. And if you tried these other ones, it doesn't pass through 1, 2. It's close, but doesn't pass through. 1, 2. Nope. That one for sure is out. That one's close, but no dice. All right. Um, choose the correct graph. Again, mother would be um, 2 to the x, which passes through. And again, if you wanted to try this just by looking... Okay, 2 to the x would be a growth function, so it's going to look like this. This is going to move it down 1, so it's going to come down 1, and this is going to move it right 2. So if I look at that, okay, normally mother would be, I don't like their graphs, 0, 1, 1, 2. Okay, there would be mother. So if I moved this down 1, that would put it doing this. And then if I moved it right 1, that would make it do this. So I'm looking for this graph that hits that 1. And see, this one doesn't, this one doesn't, this one doesn't. It's got to be that one. Or you could do the math, which would make it even more accurate. And this says subtract 1 from the y's, 0, 0. 1, 1, and this says add 1 to the x's, so that would be 1, 0, and 2, 1. 1, 0, 2, 1, there's your graph. Alright, um, it says state whether the function is an exponential growth function or an exponential decay function, and describe its end behavior using limits. Okay, my base is 1 half. I have the yard. 5 o'clock in the morning is really early. My base is 1 half, which would mean decay. However, that negative up there, it would be this, but the negative up there is going to reflect it over y, so it's going to turn it and make it look like that, which makes it not decay anymore. It makes it growth. Okay? And so if it's growth, it looks like this. And so as I go to positive infinity, this arrow is pointing up, which means the function goes to infinity. And if I go to negative infinity, which is over here, this arrow is going to get closer and closer and closer to zero. Okay. And if you look at it, there you go. Okay, solve the inequality graphically. Again, these ones, when they're not fractions, you could, you could really do it by hand and probably see more easily. It's when those bases are really close together that it's really hard to graph by hand. 2 to the x would go through 0, 1, and 1, 2. 
And I really wish that had done in a different color. 2 to the x goes through 0, 1, and 1, 2. So there's 2 to the x. Okay? Then we have 7 to the x. Dang it. 7 to the x, which is going to pass through 0, 1, and 1, 7. So 0, 1, 1, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It's way up here. So this thing's going to do this. Okay, and what they want to know is when is red smaller than green? So when is the red below the green? And that's on this side. Red is below the green. And that's when x is greater than 0. I did it on the graphing calculator, and then I tried to color code it. Okay, so you can see, I, I did yellow and red, sorry. All right, the yellow was the first one, which I did in red, um, is below the red one. All right, it says, find the y-intercept in the horizontal asymptotes. Here's this function. This is a logistic function. So to get your y-intercept, you find f of 0, which would be 14 over 1 plus 4 e to the 2 times 0. That's going to be 14 over 1 plus 4 times e to the 0. That's going to be 14 over 1 plus 4 times 1, because anything to the 0 is 1. That's 14 over 5, which 14 divided by 5 is 2.8. So f of 0 is 2.80. But in the calculator, it just says 2.8. But be careful. They want to the nearest hundredth, which is why you've got to go out two places past. Okay? And then it says the asymptotes are, well, remember on this, the lowest one is always y equals 0. The highest one is y equals c. So mine are at y equals 0 and y equals 14. Done. Okay, it says use the data in the table and assuming the growth is exponential, when will the population of the city surpass 700,000 persons? Okay, so what you do is we're going to use um, our formula to figure out what B is. So we have our formula. The final population is the initial population times B to the T. Okay, so my final population in my data is the latest y coordinate, so 636724. My initial is the earliest, 605378 times b to the time. Well, between 1990 and 1996, that's six years. So now to solve this, we're going to, we can do the math because there's not an x in the air. So I'm going to isolate it, 605378 divided by 605378. So 636724 divided by 605378. And I get 1.051779219 equals b to the 6th. Remember, I don't like to round too early. So now to get b alone, I'm going to take the 6th root. So 6 math. 1.051779219 is 1.00844936. All right, so um, yeah, we don't really want to round that too much. I want to round it to one. Okay, so my formula would be P of T equals my initial, which is 605378 times 1.008 to the t. So there's my function. And now they want to know when will this pass 700,000 persons. So they, now they want to know when will the final population be 700,000. And right now, we don't have the tools to solve that because my exponent is a variable. So until I teach you how to solve that algebraically, we have no choice but to do it graphically. And darn it, I thought I put that on here. Um, hold on just a second. Okay. 
Okay, we're going to go in this mode. I'm still recording, but I needed my calculator. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to y equals, and we're going to clear out that stuff, and we're going to type in 700,000 for y1, and we're going to, one, I'm not, I don't have zero, so, dang it, 700,000, there we go, 700,000. And then the other one, we're going to type 605378, parentheses, 1.008, parentheses, carrot, to the X. Okay, so we're going to set our window. Mm, I don't really care about the negatives. Uh, 40, I don't know if that's going to be enough. 2007, yeah, it should be enough. And then I need to go from... I need to go at least 700,000, so let's go 750,000. And let's count by hundred thousands. So now if I graph, there's my 700,000. There's my exponential function. A little slow, so now we calculate the intersection. One, two, three, and it is when x, darn it, because I can't write and see it at the same time, x is 18.2, all right, x is 18.2, x is 18.2, so when x is 18.2, the population will be 700,000, whoa, what are you doing? Sorry. Okay. Which means, though, what year will that be? Well, this is going to be mean 18 years after the beginning, which was 1990. So if I take 1990 and I add 18 years, that's going to be 8002008. So apparently, my rounding was a little off. Darn it. Hmm. 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 I'm, I'm assuming that they just used 1 instead of 1 1.008. That must be why we're off on, on rounding. Okay. Um, tell whether the function is an exponential growth function or an exponential decay function. Hold on, that's really bothering me now. look at this again. What if I went back and I did just one? It's bothering me how Yeah, so you can't round it like that. It's gonna it's gonna be one. Hmm. Wasn't it one point? Sorry, one more time here. 1990 to 1996 is six years, right? I'm trying to see why they get them 2007. And they might, maybe they rounded over here. Oh, let's see. Six, three, six, seven, two, four, divided by, or maybe I typed something wrong. Six, zero, five, three, seven, eight. Six, three, six, seven, two, four, six, zero, five, three, seven, eight. Yeah. So now if I do 6, math, 5, and I do my answer, hmm, 1.00844, 0, 0, 
Hmm. What the heck now? What did I do? I don't know guys, I don't know what the heck is wrong with this. I don't know if I'm typing it wrong or what. I don't know why they got 2007 and I got 2008. It's got to be the stupid rounding, but I'm trying to figure out how to tell you to round. I guess I couldn't have put that X on the inside. So now if we calculate the intersection, one, two, three, there we go. See, it's rounding. See, now it says X is 17.26, which would mean, okay, sorry guys. So 17.26, which is why they rounded it to 17 and got 2007. So near as I can tell, guys, is don't round. Um, I got the their answer when I used 1.008449 to the X. Okay, so again, rounding, and unfortunately Math Excel isn't that forgiving. All right, we found it. It was rounding. All right. Now, tell whether the function is an exponential growth function or an exponential decay function and find the constant percentage rate of growth or decay for the function. you got to remember your, your um, exponential function, P of T, that final is going to be the initial, 1 plus the rate T. So the function they gave me was 3.5 times 0 0.86 to the X. What that means is, 1 plus r has to equal this. So to figure out the rate, I'm going to minus 1, minus 1, and my rate is going to be 0 0.86 minus 1, negative 0.14, which means that it is decay, obviously, because it's negative, and my percentage rate of growth to turn this back into a percent, you move it two places over, and we don't put the negative on it because we know that it's decaying. It's decaying at a rate of 14%. Okay? It says, tell whether the function is exponential growth or decay and find the constant percentage rate. 
Again, here's my exponential function, and they're giving me f of t equals 248 times 3 to the t. So 1 plus r has to equal 3, so minus 1 minus 1, r equals 2. That's bigger than 1, which means it is growth. And then if you make this into, there's its decimal, to turn it to a percent, you move it two places over, which means the growth rate is at 200%. Okay, it says determine the exponential function that satisfies the given conditions. It says my initial value is 7, and it's increasing at a rate of 18%. So I do P of T equals my initial value times 1 plus 0.18, because you make this into a decimal to plug it back in, to the T. Add that, and you get P of T equals 7 times... 1.18 to the t, and I don't like using that dot there because um, mine it ends up looking like a decimal, so I use parentheses. Okay, it says find the exponential function that satisfies the given conditions. So I would have my initial population, v of t, equals 42, 425,000 times 1 plus, and if I move this two places, that's point. 1 plus 0 0.018 to the t. And if I add those, I get 425000 times 1.018 to the t. And there's my function. Okay, it says find the exponential function that satisfies these given conditions. The initial mass is 1.7, and it's doubling every four days. If it's doubling, that means your base is 2. The initial mass is 1.7, so a sub naught is 1.7. My base is 2, and it's always x over the rate at however often it doubles. So that would be x over 4. Done. Okay. Let me skip one. 16. Determine a formula for the exponential function whose values are given in the table. Okay, if we're doing an exponential function, we're doing f of x equals a times b to the x. You can find your a right there. a is 2.8. We need any other ordered pair. If you pick it the one where x is 1, then you don't have to worry about the bad exponent. So if I make this x, this y, and this a, I have 1.652 equals 2.8 times b to the first. So to get b alone, I divide by 2.8, and my base is 1.652 divided by 2.8, and I get 0 0.59. So there's my base, there's my a, and my function is a times b to the t, or x. Yep. Easy breezy. Okay, logistic function. Logistic function is this one up here. Satisfies the given conditions. The initial value is 10, the limit to growth is 90, and it passes through 526. So if my initial value is 10, uh, where does that go? My limit to growth is 90. Oh, A is 10. Yes. A is 10. C is 90. And then I have an X and a Y. So if we plug all that in, I'm going to change Y to 26. I'm going to change C to 90. I'm going to change A to 10. And I'm going to change X to 5. And then I want to solve this thing for B. So, the first thing I'm going to do is multiply by 1 plus 10b to the 5th, 1 plus 10b to the 5th, that's going to cancel this, I get 1 plus 10b to the 5th times 26 equals 90. So now I'm trying to get b alone, I'm going to go ahead and divide by 26. And I get 1 plus 
10b to the fifth equals 90 divided by 26 is 3.46, if I round, hopefully not too soon, minus 1, minus 1, I have 10b to the fifth equals 2.46, divide by 10, divide by 10, I get b to the fifth equals 2.46 divided by 10 is 0.246. Then if I take the fifth root, I get b equals 5 math 5 0.246. I get 0.755417 blah 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 blah. Oh my gosh, rounding! Oh, wait a sec. We got the wrong initial value. What do I do with that 10? Hold on. Okay. Sorry. Emmy had a brain fart. Okay, initial value, that's not your A, sorry. Your initial value is how much you had when X equals zero. Okay, so if I basically, your initial value means your starting point, which is zero comma 10. So if I plug that point and this in, I can find A. That was the trick. Okay, so I'm going to make Y10, C90, 1 plus, I'm trying to find A, I don't know A and I don't know B, but I'm going to use 0 for X because I'm plugging in the initial value. That would give me 10 equals 90 over 1 plus A because B to the 0 is 1. So now if I am trying to get A alone, I'm going to multiply by 1 plus A. That's going to give me 10 times 1 plus A equals 90. Divide by 10. 1 plus a equals 9, minus 1, a equals 8. There's where that little sucker came from. All right, so there's my a. Now I've got to figure out my base. So now I'm going to use my a, my c, and this point to figure out what b is. Okay, so I'm going to make my y 26. My c is still 90. 1 plus my a is 8 times b to the 5, because I'm using this x and this y. So now if I want to solve for b, I'm going to multiply by 1 plus 8b to the 5th. 1 plus 8b to the 5th. That gets rid of that, so I have 26 times 1 plus 8b to the 5th equals 90. Now I'm going to divide by 26 and I get 1 plus 8b to the fifth equals 90 divided by 26 is 3.461 blah 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 blah. Subtract 1, I get 8b to the fifth equals 2.46. Divide by 8, I get b to the fifth equals 2.46 divided by 8 is 0.3075. Take the fifth root, so 5 math 5.3075 is 0.789894 blah 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 blah. So it says if I, if I round this, they obviously round it to the nearest, I don't know what the heck they did. But if I go out two places, that would bump this up to a 9, so my base would be 0.79. Why they're putting four decimal places on the end of that is beyond me. But, again, if you're matching, you can at least look at and go, well, 0.79 is what I got if I round. Okay? And so now if I plug in my A, my B, and my C, I have f of x equals 90 over 1 plus 8 times 0 0.79 to the x. Okay, sorry about that. Alright, so same exact 
thing. They just used kind of different words. So my initial population is 11, which means it passes through 0, 11. So if I plug that my maximal sustainable population, that's a fancy word for C, and there's that other x, y I'm going to use to get my b. So to get a, I'm going to use this and this. So I have 11 equals 66 over 1 plus a times b to the 0, which is just 1. So I'm going to multiply by 1 plus a, 1 plus a, and I get 1 plus a times 11 equals 66, divide by 11, 1 plus a equals 6, minus 1, a equals 5. So now I have a and c, and I'm going to use a, c, and this x, y to figure out b. So I'm going to have 26 equals 66 over 1 plus 5b to the 4. So to solve for b, I need to eliminate the fraction. So 1 plus 5b to the 4th, 1 plus 5b to the 4th. That gives me 26 times 1 plus 5b to the 4th equals 66. Divide by 26, I get 1 plus 5b to the 4th equals 66 divided by 26 is 2.54. Rounding's probably going to kill me here. All right, so now I'm going to subtract 1. I get 5b to the 4th equals 1.5. You know what? I'm not going to round. I'm going to go at least four places. 3, 8, 5. Okay, divide by 5, and I get b to the 4th equals, divided by 5, 0 0.5, 0, 7, 7, 0, if I round. Then take the fourth root. So 4 math 5. And I get b equals 0 0.84411 blah 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 blah. Okay, so what the heck? How did I get that? Let's do this. Let's do 1.54 divided by 5. So I'm going to round this like I started to. And that's 0 0.308. Oh, well, that's probably why. What the heck did I do? Oh, I did forgot to strap. Oh, for crying out loud. Sorry. My little calculator thing here. I didn't look at what I was doing. I, forgot, I didn't subtract 1 on my calculator there. So let's see. 66 divided by 26. Okay, then minus 1. Then divide by 5. There we go. This was 1.54 divided by 5. So we have b to the 4th equals, there we go, 0 0.30769. Fourth root fourth root b equals so I do math four math five and I get b equals point seven four four seven good grief all right so then I have my a my b and my c so my function is f of x equals c over one plus a times b point seven four four eight to the x all right. The half-life of a certain radioactive substance is 11 days. So now we're using this function. My base has to be a half because we're doing um, half-life. It says there are 3.1 grams of the substance initially. That's my A sub naught. Type an expression for the amount of substance as a function of T. So my function will be my initial amount, 3.1, times 1 half my base, and let's see, it is, half-life is 11 days, so it's going to be time over 11. Okay, your rate of decay is, or half-life is every 11 days. 
So there's the function, and it says there will be less than one gram remaining at, after about how many days? Well, what they're telling me to do is to figure out when this side is one. When will this be less than one? So they're telling me to make this side equal to one. 3.1 times 1 half to the t over 11. We can't solve this using algebra yet because my exponent is uh, a variable. So, dang it, I did this. So we have to graph. So we're going to go to y equals, clear out all this stuff. I'm going to type 1 in for y1, and I'm going to type 3.1 parentheses. I'm just going to use 0.5 caret parentheses x divided by 11 parentheses. You've got to put that up there and type right, Tamsin. Okay. All right. And so now I'm going to change my, I'm just going to go to a zoom 6 because I'm only going to 1. And can't see it. So I'm going to have to go out farther this way, obviously. So let's see. Let's go out to 20. Let's go out to 25. There it crosses. So now if we calculate intersection, 1, 2, 3. It crosses at x equals 17.9, whatever it was, and it says round to the nearest tenth. I think that was 99. Nine. So if I round to the nearest tenth, that's going to bump it up to a 0, which makes that an 8 and a 1. And notice how they put the point 0, because if it says to the nearest tenth, you've got to put that tenth in there. Okay? All right, it says a radioactive element decays according to the function y equals y sub naught e to the negative 0.0374t, where t is time in years. If an initial sample contains 5 grams, so they're telling you y sub naught is 5, how many grams will be present after 60 years, and what is the half-life of this element? Okay, so to answer the first one, they're telling me to change t to 60. So I have y equals y sub naught is 5, e to the negative 0 0.0374 times 60. So you're literally going to type that in. And I think I'll do it with you. Okay, so we're going to do 5e caret, and I'm going to put it in parentheses, negative 0 0.0374 times 60. See, I put all that in parentheses, and then I hit enter, and I get 0 0.53, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so when I type this in, I get 0 0.53 grams left. Now, what is the half-life of this element? Well, to figure out half-life, guys, you have your initial amount, which is 5 grams, right? This represents the final amount. Well, if I only want half of it left, wouldn't that make that side half of 5, which is 2.5? 0.374t. Okay. Which we're going to use x. Again, at this point, I can't solve this algebraically because I have a variable in the air. So... I'm going to have to do it graphically. So I go to y equals. I'm going to make y1 2.5. And this side I'm going to make 5e e caret negative parentheses negative 0.374x. Close those. And let's see, 2.5, we hit graph. There's the 2.5, there's the function, calculate intersection, and you get uh, one point, why am I off by 10 years?
5e to the negative. Oh, because I forgot that zero. Jeez, Tamsin. There's a zero in between there. I knew I was off by something. Insert a zero and now graph. And calculate intersection. One, two, three. And there we go. So y or x equals eight. It's going to take about 18.5 years. Okay, so when they intersected, x was 18.5 and y was 2.5. So after 18 and a half years, there'll only be half of the substance left. So the half life of this element is 18.5. Okie doke. All right, it says the number of students infected with flu at a high school after T days is modeled by the function. It says, what is the initial number of students infected? Well, that's when you start at day zero. So I find F of zero, which would be 700 over 1 plus 99e e to the negative 0 0.2 times zero, which is going to be 700 over 1 plus 99 times 1 which is 700 over 100, which is 7. So the initial number of students infected was 7. Then it says the school will close when 600 of the 700 students are infected. And after how many days will the school close? So they're telling me, or they're asking me, when will 600 kids have the flu? So they're telling me to change this to 600 kids. And I want to know when that equals 700 over 1 plus 99e e to the negative 0.2t. We can't solve this algebraically because my exponent is a variable. So we're going to do, oh, I actually graphed this one. Yay. So we're going to do graphing. And you can see that I typed in 600 for y1 and this in for y2. And I changed my window, negative 10 to 40, negative 10 to 750. Okay, and this thing, by the way, here's my 600 line. My 700 line's up here. And remember, see how it snakes through there? Okay, and where it crosses 600 is right there, which says that's going to be when x is 31.93, blah, 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 blah. And they want a whole number. So if I round, that makes 32 days. All right. Find the logarithm. Um, again, here the trick is, is to make this match this. So if I broke 4 down by 2's, that's 4 is the same as 2 squared. So I can replace 4 with 2 squared. And now that these match, my answer is 2. Okay, find the ind indicated value of the logarithmic function. This is log, if they don't write a base, it's log base 10. And I can rewrite 1,000 as... 10 cubed, those cancel, and my answer is 3. Okay, your base of a natural log is e, those cancel, and my answer is negative 1. Again, my base for ln is e, but I don't want a fraction, so move it up, and that's going to be e to the negative first, and again, these cancel, and my answer is negative 1. Okay, this, these cancel, my answer is 6. Solve for x, when you have no base, it's 10. When you have an equal sign to solve, you roll the log, and the base squirts over. So you have x left on this side, and this side would be 10 to the 6, and 10 to the 6 is yeah, a million. Yeah? Okay, so now if I do this one, roll the log and the base moves over. When the log rolls over, the base moves over. So x equals 10 to the negative third, which that as a decimal would be 0 0.001. Or you could have written it as 1 over 10 cubed, which would be 1 over 1,000, which is at 0 0.001. But apparently they want in decimal form. All right, so graph this. Okay, the logarithmic function, guys, 
the logarithmic function does this. It comes up, passes through 1, 0, and does this. Okay? So if it passes through 1, 0, this says move it 3 left. That means I'm going to go, I mean 3 right, right? So that means I would go over 3. And the reason it doesn't look like it went over all three is because their, their graphs are going from negative 5 to 25. So that's negative 5, that's 25, which means they're counting by 5. So that's 5. So moving over 3 would put it right at 4, right? Because it passes through 1, 3 units over would pass through 4. So those two are out. These two both are 4. But there's no stretching. If this was stretched out like this and it was steeper like this, there'd have to be some sort of a number here out front making it stretch, and it's not, so it's got to be that one. All right, graph this function. Again, the natural log function comes up like this. It also passes through 1, 0. Okay, this negative is going to turn it upside down, which means it's going to go like this. And then this is going to move it six places left. So it's going to go this way, six units, which is going to put it over here. Well, the only one that does that is this. And you're going, why is it going through negative five and not negative six? Because remember, natural log passes through one zero. So six units would only put it over at negative five. All right, and it says graph this and compare it to this. Well, again, this is going to be your logarithmic function, one unit left. So it should pass here, now it's passing here. So it's got to be that one. Okay, or that one. That one's passing through 0, 2. But this one would have more of a stretch, whereas this one is no stretch, and I don't have any stretch. Okay, so now compare it to log x. Well, it's going to be shifted one unit to the left. All right, and then the loudness L in decibels, dB, is given by this formula. L equals, and we used B, right? So they're using L. And then remember we had 10 times the log of I over I sub naught, but the I sub naught is always 10 to the negative 12. They're giving me the intensity I of a sound, so they're telling me to replace that with 3.3 times 10 to the negative 6 divided by 10 to the negative 12. If I type in 3.3 times 10 to the negative 6, and I divide that by 10 to the negative 12, oh wait, I need parentheses. So I've got 3.3 times 10 to the negative 6 divided by 10 caret negative 12, and I get L equals 10 times log of 33.3300000. And then we type this in the calculator. So 10 times log of 33.123450. And you get 65.185. And it rounds to the nearest whole number, 65. All right, and we are done, so happy homeworking, and I will see you next time.